I'm David Forster at QC. I specialise in environmental and planning law here at Landmark Chambers. Hi, my name is Samantha Broadfoot and I'm a barrister at Landmark Chambers. My name is Miriam Stacey. I'm a property barrister at Landmark Chambers. So my name's Andrew Parkinson. I'm a barrister at Landmark Chambers and I've been here for about six years now and I specialise mainly in planning and environmental law. My name is Miriam Seatler. I've been at Landmark for two years, including my pupillage, and I specialise mainly in property law. I decided to do pupillage at Landmark because I knew that I wanted to specialise in planning law, um, and Landmark is the number one set for um, planning law. Um, I also um, realised, though, that um, or like the fact that um, pupillage at Landmark, you don't just specialise in planning, you also look at public law, property law and environmental law as well. So that by the end of pupillage you've got a very well-rounded understanding of all of those areas. I think I chose Landmark for two reasons. The first was its excellent reputation in its practice areas, in particular property law, which is what I was interested in at the time. And the second reason was it had a very modern um, vibe and that really attracted me compared to a lot of other chance resets which seem to be more old-fashioned. The do's and don'ts for pupil barristers, so do show interest and enthusiasm, do take opportunities, for example if you come out of court and your supervisor is about to draft an order, offer to do one also. Do offer to help and research do be aware that you're in your supervisor's space and therefore be discreet. Don't be over familiar. Do ask questions, but pick your moment, so not in conference, for example, or not um, at, in court. Uh, do keep an eye on deadlines for work if it transpires that the piece of research that you've been asked to do is more extensive than everybody had thought and it's going to take you longer. Speak to your pupil supervisor and let them know in advance, let them know as soon as you realise and they might say that's fine, take an extra day or they might say just focus on this point because that's the most important at this stage. If you're going to court with somebody else, uh, do ask what you can do, um, if there's anything you can do. Uh, it shows interest and it shows initiative. And finally, do keep a sense of perspective. Uh, most of us remember what it's like to do pupillage and it's quite an intense um, period but um, it's also a, a, a it can be a very interesting uh, time and uh, try and take the opportunity to learn as much as you can. Don't, uh, don't leave papers lying around, remember that they are confidential, uh, don't discuss your cases uh, in any detail um, other than with your pupil supervisor. It's not uncommon in a chamber, especially like landmark chambers, to have barristers on opposite sides of the same case and you may not realise uh, until you've said too much. So uh, remember your work is confidential uh, and uh, don't proffer your opinion in conference. It doesn't happen very often but it does sometimes and it's probably best not to. One of the most difficult things that pupils uh, and, and uh, early year barristers uh, find is the difficulty of getting a decent work-life balance uh, because it's very uh, easy to let the work completely take over um, and certainly in the early years and during pupillage you feel the in imperative to do everything at, uh, immediately to impress people, to keep uh, your clients happy and so on and to keep your pupil supervisors happy. Uh, fundamental to a successful career at the bar, I think, is getting a decent work-life balance from the outset and in being strict with yourself about doing the things you enjoy outside work as well. What pupils tend to find most challenging in terms of um, my area of expertise and my experience is multitasking, um, also grasping difficult concepts within a relatively short space of time and also the practical application of commerciality to a set of papers. Pupils are often very well versed in academic analysis, but what they tend not to have as much experience of is applying commerciality and asking themselves whether, whilst a point may be interesting in principle, it is in fact in the client's commercial interest to run it. I think the most challenging aspect of pupillage was um, learning so much in, in such a short period of time. 
So I, I came to Landmark with no knowledge of planning law, environmental law, or really property law. Um, and I had to teach myself quite quickly um, the basics and, and get to grips with it in a short period of time. But I found that my supervisors realised um, and almost expected that I came in with not much knowledge. Um, so particularly at the beginning I was encouraged to take my time with pieces of work, um, not to rush it and to make sure that I really understood um, the area of law before I handed the piece of work to my supervisor. Um, the most interesting case I worked on during pupillage was a um, challenge to the government's decision to cut school funding uh, through the Building Schools for the Future programme, um, which was a um, decision that um, came out during my first couple of weeks of pupillage. And uh, my pupil supervisor was acting for a number of schools challenging the decision. And it was interesting because it was the first judicial review um, that I'd seen, and it was also a very high profile case that. Uh, was reported in, in the papers, so it was good to be involved in that early on during pupillage. When I was doing my public law seat with my supervisor, she was working on a case called Rights of Women Against the Lord Chancellor, which was a challenge to the legal aid provisions, um, which made provision for victims of domestic violence to benefit from legal aid, and we were challenging the evidential requirements which related to those provisions. One un unexpected thing I experienced during pupillage, which I didn't think I had anticipated, was the extent to which different members of chambers collaborate with each other. So I had expected it would be much more independent work all the time, and I was pleased to see that people, barristers were popping into each other's rooms, asking each other's questions, and working with each other collaboratively on their cases which was a pleasure to see. One of the things I wasn't expecting at Landmark was um, that my pupil supervisor was very sensitive to making sure that I had a good work-life balance. So um, I thought I'd be working every weekend, working late into the night, but actually every day at six o'clock, pupil supervisor said, go home now, have the evening off. And actually it's very sensible advice because pupillage uh, lasts a year, it can feel like a, a year-long job interview at times and you do need to have time off, um, time to yourself to, to get through it. So um, that was something that I wasn't expecting but was a pleasant surprise. The best advice I would give to a pupil preparing for pupillage would be to read attend moots and specifically the landmark property moot which is up and running which provides good experience for advocacy training to show interest um, to have done the property modules um, that have been offered to them um, and to take it every opportunity to do as much advocacy as possible i would recommend anyone who is applying to landmark now for pupillage to focus primarily on advocacy experience so that's in any um, form a mooting, debating, particularly in a legal context is very useful, so f uh, any free representation unit work you can get, any legal advice centre work or any advocacy in the courts that you can get on a formal or informal basis is extremely useful in terms of getting you used to advocacy and speaking in front of people, but also giving you something to talk about in the interview and the application process. We always say to people who are thinking about doing a pupillage here, make sure through university and through bar school and through um, anything else you're doing that you're genuinely interested and motivated by what you're uh, doing. Don't just do things for the purposes of ticking boxes on a, on a CV um, because it shines through at interviews. People who are doing stuff they really enjoy and are really motivated by, you can tell straight away in an interview. Well, I think one of the things that um, people need to be ready for is um, a lot of hard work. It is hard work, uh, especially when you start, um, because um, you're trying to develop a name for yourself and, and build a practice. So advice for pupillage, make the most of the opportunity and learn what you can. Most people in chambers are very friendly and very happy to uh, for you to knock on their door and come and see us and talk to us and get some help or advice. Uh, and uh, enjoy it.